So last summer, I kind of became an Italian farmer, unexpectedly. I am from the city, and I don't really know anything about plants or animals. But this opportunity came about when I was talking to a friend who had another friend who had a farm in Italy. He was looking for people to farm sit while he was away so that his plants and animals don't die while he's gone, which makes sense. My friend just kind of passively was talking about this. I'm like, oh man, that kind of sounds fun. Well, if you want to come, feel free. You just got to get to Italy. This is something I never am going to do. I'm never going to have a farm. I'm never going to invest in my own pigs or cows. In this moment, I knew that I kind of had to say yes because I wanted to know what it's like. Plus, both my parents grew up on a farm, by the way. So I think I have a little farmer DNA in me. It called to me in some kind of way. So I took up the offer and I made my way to Italy. So I get there and here's the farm. The house, which is a large house, is situated here. There's a garage. There are three dogs, a bunch of chickens, a trampoline, goats, sheep, some pigs who are separated because of pig drama, a bunch of cats, and two roosters. So it was a full farm. There was a lot to do. I didn't know how this was gonna go, cause again, as a city guy, the hard work I do is at a desk. Could I handle the work? <clears throat> well, we got a stack of papers of things to do, which was generally like this. Feed the dogs, but separated, and keep an eye on Bo because he tries to eat others' foods. Feed the pigs, but water down their food into a slop, and keep an eye on the big brother pig because he likes to steal his little brother's food. The kitties need their breakfast, but only fill their food up until the bottom of the bowl is filled because they don't always eat the food from the day before. A cup of feed for the chickens and the roosters. Scooch some hay for the sheep. The goats will just eat the grass outside. Then, finally, cut up some veggies from the garden and give it to everybody as a breakfast treat. I think this is really gonna work out because I get really stressed about traveling to places where I don't know the language, but in this situation, I'm on a farm with a great view, so I don't have to worry about stepping on any toes and I can just enjoy the beauty of Italy in the backyard of this small farm. But then I start to hear some yelling. Italian yelling. I look around and see it's their neighbor yelling at me, an old Italian woman. I don't know any Italian. I only speak American. So this made me kind of nervous. Does she think we're intruding in her neighbor's home? Is she gonna call the police? Will I get taken away? And what kind of punishments will they subject me to? Eh, maybe they deport me, I don't know. Oh, what's that? You want me to talk about you some more? Well, only if you pay me, so. This video is sponsored by Battle Cats. Do you have the capacity for enjoyment? Please, give me peace. Well, I got the game for you! Battle Cats is a game where there are cats. You're their leader, and you're out to conquer the universe. What a normal game! In Battle Cats, you are to use your wide variety of cats in your cat army to face very normal looking enemies that do not induce fever dreams. Maybe you will conquer the universe with this adorable little baby, or this adorable little baby. The choice is yours. Battle Cats combat is easy to learn. You simply take over the world by having enough money, kind of like the real world. Once you have enough money, you get a cat, and you're off to the races. Meow meow, take that! Enjoy tons of seasonal stages and special rare capsule sets appearing into the start of the new year and get some awesome heroes for free with a Christmas gift or rare ticket on December 24th and 25th. Download Battle Cats on iOS or Android for free using the link in the description or this QR code. Unless you're watching this on a phone, you can't use it then. Then you have to use the description link, silly little man. Battle Cats, thanks for sponsoring this video. So this old lady was yelling something, and also her dogs were acting like they're ready to feast on my blood. I just kind of wanted to ignore it, but she persisted, and I can't really just sit there pretending like I don't hear anything, because you can definitely hear something. So I approach, and I'm like, ha, ah, hey, I don't speak any town. Oh. And she threw a fig at me! And I realized she was sharing her figs. She was still speaking Italian while I tried to catch all the figs. I thought, what am I gonna do with all these figs? I've never even seen a fig that wasn't a Fig Newton. Uh, but we were on a farm in Italy. We could use this in a delicious charcuterie board. So I said, thank you. And she said something in Italian. And her dog said something that will probably get you monetized. And we went our separate ways. And we set up to make a charcuterie board. The fig charcuterie board night was part charcuterie, part panic. Using the figs that we just got, we set up a delicious spread. Many cheeses and crackers we were just about to enjoy, but then Grace said there's something in the chicken coop. We had access to their security camera around the farm so that we can keep an eye on things when it's nighttime. And Grace saw that on the camera there was a non-chicken shaped entity in the chicken coop. We didn't want to lose any of the chickens, so we ran out to make sure everything was okay and it wasn't a threat. And it wasn't a threat. It was a little baby owl. We were really freaked out that there was going to be like a bloodbath that we'd have to deal with but 
it was okay because the baby owl was just a little baby and he didn't want to hurt anybody probably maybe do owls even eat chickens i don't know he didn't run at all and he was actually really sweet and chill so that was nice we took him out of the chicken coop and we put him in the barn loft where there was a bunch of hay and he could be warm for the night so i'm thankful that everything worked out but the trip wasn't completely casualty -less. There was one day while I'm working on the farm, I see what I thought was a cat in the distance. It's kind of a weird looking cat. This, I would later learn, was not a cat and was the cause of some actual chicken loss. When the night comes around, there's another checklist that we have to go through. And one of the tasks is counting the chickens. We counted the chickens and there were not enough chickens. We look for the chicken and we could not find the chicken. Where was the chicken? We messaged the guy who actually owns the farm and we're like, hey, uh, we can't find one of the chickens, but the fence is completely closed in. Um, are we missing something? He mentions that there has been a fox roaming around and somehow probably got got. Poor guy. Rest in peace, little chicken. So time passes, and I see again, hey, that isn't a cat at all, that's a fox. We stare each other down, kind of like that scene in Fantastic Mr. Fox, except this fox was not fantastic, and I didn't like him at all. That night, when we're closing up, we count the chickens and stuff, and we all go to sleep. As I'm drifting off, the dogs start to go ballistic, and I think, it's the fox. I am filled with farmer's determination, and I snap from dreamland into 100% lucidity. I run outside and instinctively grab a pitchfork and sprint towards the chicken coop like Robocop if he had a different, more rural line of work. I turn the corner and there, Mr. Fantastic himself. There was a fence between me and him. I was battle ready, but I couldn't get to him. So my instinct set in and I did what I could. And the day was won. The fox was gone and the chickens were safe. I think I actually did something there because after that night, he never came back. I also think I was ready to die because that night I dove head first into a fox fight with zero fighting experience for some chickens that I've only known for a couple of days. I really, I probably would have gotten really hurt if there was not a fence there. So I'll just pat myself on the back and call it a win. The rest of the experience was great. Italy has pizza. I'm sure that some of you may know that. In one of my previous videos, I talk about how I dislike French fried pizza. Try to make it myself, tasted it, tasted really bad. Not a good idea. But I had a couple of comments that told me in Italy, it is a thing. It's called American pizza and that I should try it. Well, I was in Italy. Guess what I ordered? American style pizza. And guess what? It was really good. I don't know how they pulled it off. Here, have a taste. Yeah, tastes good. It's like Italians really know their pizza or something. Anyway, the farming was good. The dogs were lovely. The cats were chill. The goats took care of themselves. The sheep were super freaky. Beautiful scenery. The whole experience was great. And I would certainly go back. Thanks for watching. Thank you to Matt for animating. Matt had a big part of animating this video with me. Everybody cl clap for Matt. Okay, clap for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again. See you later.